Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at a really simple integral that we're gonna solve using a trigonometric substitution. Now, before we get into that, make sure you realize this integral is much easier to evaluate with a basic u substitution. Go with u equals 25 minus x squared. We're gonna to get to that at the end. Now, if you're not comfortable or aware of all the steps that go into a typical trigonometric substitution problem, check out the video I have linked down in the description where we go through everything in detail. There's some steps there, and we're gonna immediately pick up with the first one, taking a look at our integral, or radical, or square root, and determining the substitution. So in our denominator, we have the square root of 25 minus x squared, and we take a look at our three types, which you'll need to know, and the first one fits that form, a number, minus x squared inside the square root. So we're gonna end up using here x equals a times sine of theta for our trig substitution. How we determine the value of a is we take a look at that number, 25, that's five squared. So we'll be using a as five. All right, our substitution for x is going to be x equals phi sine of theta, and always immediately calculate your differential dx. And that's going to come out to phi cosine theta d theta. All right, the whole goal with this trig substitution is to get the radical or square root to cancel. So let's go through that work. If you're not comfortable with all that, again, check out the video I have linked down in the description where we go through that and take our time with it. But let's go through that here. We're gonna take that square root and simplify it first before plugging everything in. All right, so we're gonna substitute x as five times sine theta. And since that's x squared inside, we're gonna square both five and sine theta. So we'll have the square root of 25 minus 25 times sine squared theta. All right, eventually you'll use a Pythagorean identity, but to do that first, we're gonna factor out 25 inside the square root. So we'll get the square root of 25 times now one minus sine squared theta. And at this point, you will always use a Pythagorean identity. And the one that we're gonna be using is one minus sine squared equals cosine squared. So if we go ahead and replace that inside the square root, we have the square root of 25 times cosine squared theta. And now when we take the square root of each of those factors, the square root will cancel. We should get five times cosine theta. So at this point, our goal is achieved. The square root is now eliminated. We just need to plug everything back in. All x's will be replaced with five sine theta. We just did the work for simplifying the square root, which we can replace with five cosine theta. And again, don't forget your differential dx. All right, let's go ahead and plug that all in. And what we should have is a trig integral. So x is gonna be replaced with five sine theta. The square root, we just went through the work over that to the side here. That's going to simplify to five cosine theta. And the part that's most often forgotten or overlooked by Calc 2 students is replacing the differential dx. And that's being replaced or substituted with five cosine theta d theta. All right, and at this point, we have a very simple trig integral because the factors of five and cosine theta cancel out. And we're left with the integral of five sine theta. All 
and that we can easily find an antiderivative for. Your antiderivative for sine is negative cosine. So we get here negative 5 times cosine theta plus c. And the only work that's left here is to convert from theta back to x using what I call a conversion triangle, which comes from our substitution. And again, if you're not comfortable or familiar with that work, check out the video linked down in the description where we go through that in detail. So let's go ahead and convert theta back to x using a basic right triangle. Start with your substitution. We have it as x equals 5 times sine theta, and basically solve this for the trig function, which we can divide by 5 to do that. So we get sine of theta equals x over 5. And we're going to just think of basic SOHCAHTOA here. Sine of an angle is going to be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we can label two out of the three sides If we put our angle theta down in that left spot there, relative to that angle, the opposite side will be of length x, and the hypotenuse, that's going to be of length 5. And always make sure you can work out the third side using the Pythagorean theorem, and what you'll get, no coincidence, it's going to be the square root of 25 minus x squared. All right, now how we use this to convert back is we're going to use our conversion triangle to determine what cosine of theta is in terms of x. So now we just rely on basic SOHCAHTOA. Cosine of an angle theta. That's going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So we get cosine of theta equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. That's the adjacent side. And then that is divided by the hypotenuse, which is of length 5. And that's how we convert from theta in our antiderivative here, or a trig function of theta, back to x. So if we make that replacement, we have a factor of negative 5. Cosine of theta, we're replacing that with the fraction, the square root of 25 minus x squared, divided by 5. Don't forget the plus c, and this does simplify. You can cancel those factors of 5 out, and we get for our antiderivative negative times the square root of 25 minus x squared. And that is all of the work for solving this integral using trig substitution. And it includes pretty much all the standard steps. First, going from your radical to choosing your substitution, using that substitution to eliminate the radical or square root, getting a trig integral, evaluating the trig integral, and then doing the conversion back to x, most often done using a conversion triangle. Now again, the antiderivative here, while we found it using trig substitution, it's much more efficient and quicker to use a basic u substitution. So let's go ahead and get to that right now. For our u substitution, we're going to go with u equals 25 minus x squared. And the observation here is to notice if you differentiate x squared, you'll get a factor of x, which you can use for your differential. So your differential here comes out du equals negative 2x dx. And we have a factor of x dx, but we're missing a factor of negative 2. So divide that over and write this as negative 1 half du equals x dx. 
All right, if we go ahead and convert from x to u, x dx we can replace with negative 1 half du. And your denominator, that square root, the inside, we're going to replace that with u. So we get 1 over the square root of u. All right, and that should be very easy to integrate if you rewrite that as u to the negative 1 half power. And if you go ahead and apply the power rule, add one to that exponent to get the positive one half power, divide by the new power, divide by a half, it's the same thing as multiplying by two. So keep your factor of negative one half. Your antiderivative gives you a factor of one divided by a half or two, and we get u to the positive one half. All right, and the only thing we need to do here is back substitute u in terms of x. You can cancel the factor of two and a half out, and it looks like we have a negative. The one half power, you can write that as a square root, and now u, that was 25 minus x squared. And we get the same answer that we did earlier at the beginning using a trigonometric substitution, but take a look at the work. It's much simpler and more efficient to use a u substitution. Now this is a really good question that I like to include on my Calc 2 tests and exams because it really tests a student's ability to not only be able to solve the problem, but to see if they can determine the simplest way to evaluate it. So don't just blindly think because there's square roots, you have to use trig substitutions. Be on the lookout for trying a substitution maybe u as the inside, and if there's a factor of just x in the numerator, you can probably use a basic u substitution like we did here. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you really learned a lot when you might want to use a trig substitution and when you might want to try a basic u substitution. If you're enjoying the content, support the channel, like and subscribe.